Hey, Michael, guess what? The doctors have finally set a date for me to come home. They've marked it on the calendar. And I can't wait to leave this hospital room. Just three more days and I'll be back home with you. I'm over the moon now. That's fantastic news, Marisa. I've been looking forward to this moment too. Don't worry. I'll make sure I'm there for you on the day. Work can wait. You're sweet, Michael. But the hospital's got it covered. They've arranged a special taxi for me, one that's wheelchair friendly. Everything will be fine, just like how I get through everything. I just wish I had been more careful, Marisa. I want to be there for you, to support you through every step of your recovery journey. I feel very sorry for you. If only you had been more careful that day, you wouldn't have been in the hospital and... Ah, uh, I really blame myself. It's not all on you. Don't beat yourself up like that. I was pretty out of it too, you know. We both learned from this experience. But I was the one not paying attention, glued to my phone. I should have been more vigilant and watching out for you. The doctors are optimistic though. They think I might be able to walk again with some hard work and determination. So stay positive, Michael. We'll do it. And I firmly believe that one day, I'll be able to walk normally as long as I practice diligently. Is that really likely? I mean, I don't want to get your hopes up. Don't start doubting now, Michael. I'm determined to walk again, and I'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. I'm so sorry for everything, Marisa. I truly am. Don't be too hard on yourself. I'm just glad you were there with me. It would have been much worse to face it alone. I still feel responsible for your fall. Then promise me you'll be more careful in the future. And if you're not, I might not be so forgiving next time. I promise. No more distractions. I'm really sorry, Marisa. I'll do better. I promise. Come on, Michael. Let's put it behind us. When I get out of here, let's celebrate, not dwell on the past. You're sure you're not mad at me? I can't shake off this guilt. What's the point of being mad? What happened is in the past and dwelling on it won't change a thing. But it might be a while before you can walk again. And I hate that I contributed to that. There's never a moment when I don't recall the scene that day. The feeling of helplessness and guilt was always in my mind. Being angry won't help me walk any faster. I'm focusing on getting better. And you should too. You're right, of course. I just need to learn to forgive myself. Are we going over this again? Let's focus on the positive, like planning our celebration when I come home. I'm looking forward to being discharged from the hospital and then we could have a party to welcome me back. I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun that day. Absolutely. This goes without mentioning. Okay, I'll pick up something special for us then. What do you want for dinner? I'm not sure how cooking's gonna go in this wheelchair. Maybe we should order in. Good idea. We can have dinner delivered. Whatever you want, just let me know. I'll order your favorites. Perfect. I'll have my hands fully adjusted on the way to the house. I'll order us something nice. And Marisa, if you need help with anything at home, just let me know. Thanks, babe. I'll try and figure it out first and then we can see if we need to change anything. I'm here for you. All right. Just tell me what you need and I'll help with whatever you need. We're in this together. Hey, Michael, can you do me a favor on your way back from work? Could you grab a bottle of vinegar for me? I'm stuck inside because of the rain and I can't get it myself today. Huh? Wait a minute. What? Vinegar? Why do you have to do this now? It's been pouring all day and I can't go out. I don't have a raincoat. It's just not possible for me to go. If you had a raincoat, you could manage, you know. But you choose to stay in. Stop trying to make excuses for your laziness, Marisa. I'm fed up with your excuses. What? I just need vinegar, that's all. There are plenty of stores on your way back where you could pick some up. Why are you being so difficult and upset with your wife, Michael? Ah, uh, you're so annoying. Fine, but don't wait up for me for dinner. I'll eat out. Hold on a second. Really? You'll eat out? You'd rather eat out than make a quick stop? Look, the vinegar thing is your problem, not mine. You should have been prepared, but instead, you give me orders. Okay, you're being unreasonable here, Michael. Blaming me is one thing, but skipping dinner over vinegar? It's not just about the vinegar. 
It's getting harder to come home with everything going on. Are you saying I'm in the way? Your wheelchair makes it tough to move around the house. It's stressful and you always use that excuse to force me to do this and that. And I suddenly realized that I was gradually becoming no different from a slave. Really? Is that what you think? I can't help that. You know, I need this chair. Didn't you say you were going to walk again? Or was that just talk? That's cruel, Michael. I'm still hopeful. The doctors think I can recover. It doesn't seem like it. I'm doing everything for you and getting nowhere. It's like I'm pouring all my energy into a black hole. And it's just not enough. I'm at my wit's end here. Trying to find some way to make things better for us both. So you want a reward for helping me? Remember, I didn't choose to be in this chair. It's not like I'm sitting here enjoying your struggles. I feel helpless. And seeing you upset only makes it worse. We said we'd move on from the past, right? But it's hard when every day feels like a reminder of what went wrong. I'm struggling to keep that promise when the past is staring us right in the face. But you sound so bitter. You used to be so supportive. And now you're cold. It's like the warmth between us is fading. And I don't know how to bring it back. I'm tired of trying without seeing any progress. You're still defective, you know. I'm giving up my life here. Every day is a repeat of the last, and I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Calling me defective really hurts. Is that how you see me? Like I'm a broken thing? Not the person you loved? It cuts deeper than you know. Let's face it. You can't walk. You're stuck without me. And that's a burden I never expected to carry. It's not just about the physical help. It's the emotional weight that's crushing me. I never wanted to hear that from you. To think that I'm some sort of burden to you, it's heartbreaking. I thought we were in this together for better or worse. What's next, Marisa? More blame? I've kept quiet about wanting a divorce just to avoid drama. But it's eating me up inside. This constant tension and unhappiness. Divorce? You've thought about that? It's like a cold splash of reality. I knew things were tough, but I didn't realize you were at the breaking point. Yes, but our families would freak out. I'm trapped by Judy, but I won't be blamed for everything. It's like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, with no good way out. So you've been hiding how you feel to protect me? It's hard to believe that you'd keep such thoughts to yourself. I thought we promised to be honest with each other no matter what. Michael, I have something I'd like to talk to you about. Do you think you could come home as soon as you get out of work? It's important and I'd rather we discuss it in person. I don't think so. My workload is overwhelming and it's not letting up. It looks like I'll be stuck at the office again tonight. Maybe even longer than usual. But you've never had to stay this late consistently, especially not for this company. When I was in a similar role, the workload was never this extreme. Are you sure there's not something else going on? Well, I don't think you understand the demands of this company. It's changed a lot since you were last in the industry. And the pressure is relentless. But even my dad, who's quite familiar with your industry, mentioned that this isn't typically a busy period. It's odd that your company would be the exception. Stop trying to compare what this company has to get done with whatever his company is doing right now. The situation here is unique. And everyone is swamped with tasks. So we're not even going to be able to have a normal discussion anymore, huh? Is our communication just going to be brief updates and excuses? We don't have anything to discuss, do we? If it's not urgent, it can wait. Right now, my focus has to be on my work. Well, I have something urgent. It's about us. It's about our relationship and I can't wait. Then you can tell me right here, right now on the phone. If it's that urgent, why delay? I'll take a look at what you have to say later after you're done typing. Then I guess I'll let you know right now. Michael, you've been cheating on me, right? And I need to hear it from you. What? Do you have any proof of that? Because this is a serious accusation. And I need to know what's led you to believe such a thing. I found a letter in one of your suit pockets. It was from Valentine's Day. It had some pretty intimate things written on the inside of it. What the heck? You're going to start doubting me because of that? I just happen to be really popular with a lot of the women around town. So every year I happen to get a lot of Valentine's Day letters and cards from them. It doesn't mean anything. But this one is asking you what hotel you want to stay at next time. This would mean you're cheating on me, right? I don't know anything about that. 
I bet whoever was writing that was doing so as a joke or something. Stop trying to tell me that the letter is enough proof to say that I'm really cheating on you. So after all the times you've been seen outside of the house these past few months, you're gonna try and hide the truth from me now? I'm not trying to hide anything from you though, Marisa. You already know that. If I'm to throw you away, your life will be over, right? You're still in that crappy wheelchair and you've gotten old. I don't think there are any men that will be willing to marry a defect like you now. So even if you were to find out that I've been cheating on you, you wouldn't be able to divorce me. You could have just told me that you knew about the letter in your suit pocket. And we could have carried on from there. Well, you can't consider some letter that I get all the time from random women as proof. You're freaking out so much right now that I'm having a laugh. What do you want to do about this? Do you want me to tell you that I'm cheating just so that you can feel something again after sitting in that thing for so long? So you had been cheating on me then? I've had to live with a crippled woman. So don't act as though me having some other women around to play with is such a bad thing. You're such a jerk, Michael. I understand very well now that you're not the same Michael that I fell in love with. A mess up as bad as you has nowhere else to go but hell. Shut up already, Marisa. I've been trying so hard to have a life of my own. You've always gotten in the way of it. And because you fell down those stairs, I have to be the one to care for your butt. I didn't volunteer for this job, Marisa. I've said this a lot now, but you should be thankful that I haven't thrown you away yet. I'm not thankful for you at all now. Don't you say another freaking word. If you try and talk back to me again, I will surely leave you a piece of crap in a wheelchair like you. Needs to shut the hell up and listen to me. Calling me a piece of crap is pretty brave of you, Michael, but I can walk again. Huh? You can walk now? Yeah, I've been able to stand up on my own now for over a month. And as long as I have some things to support myself with, I'm able to walk. Stop trying to give me such BS lies. Just a few days ago, you were still in that wheelchair. That's because I didn't want you knowing I could walk again. I wanted to take a little bit longer to find a lot of good evidence of you cheating on me. So I played the part of a cripple for just a few days more. What? If you had known I was able to walk again, you might have stopped going out with these other women. And I would have missed my chance to get heartproof. And having you come back home all the time again would have annoyed me. I also didn't want you trying to change back to the Michael you used to be before the accident. But for over a half year, you weren't able to walk. Are you actually able to start walking again that quickly? You're shocked right now, aren't you? Even the doctors were shocked to see me walking again so quickly. Have you really been able to walk again? That's why I'm telling you right now that I have. If you don't believe me, then come home right now and see for yourself. I see. All right, I'll be home as soon as I can after work. And we're going to be talking about getting a divorce tonight, okay? Wait, what the hell? You are finally able to walk again and you want to get a divorce deal? Are you saying that since you don't need a wheelchair anymore, you don't have a use for me? Um, why should I have to continue being married to a man that cheated on me with multiple other women? You have it all wrong now, Marisa. You were just a bit upset right now and overthinking things about what you saw. Did I ever say to you that I was actually cheating on you? Why do you think I've been so quiet about things for the longest time now? I told you that I was using the time to make sure I got all the evidence I needed, and that there's a lot more than just this letter. Me wanting to leave you now isn't because I can walk again. I've been getting ready to divorce you way before I was able to stand again. And another thing, these texts are being viewed by both your mom and dad right now. My parents? Why them? Why are you doing this? Because I knew I was going to go on divorcing you for a long time now. I made sure to do all of this so you couldn't run away from me. And not just that, but also my mom and dad are watching this conversation play out. So I think it's best you stop trying to make excuses for things and just come home and remember that there's no use for you trying to run. So just come here after your work is finished and we can move on with things. I'm not going to run or hide from you, so don't try doing that to me. Marisa, every moment you're away feels like an eternity. The emptiness in our home is a constant reminder of your absence. Please, come back to our sanctuary, where we built our dreams together. Michael, I understand your longing, 
but I'm consumed by the daunting tasks of packing and sorting through the remnants of our shared life. It's a journey through memories that brings both pain and nostalgia, making it difficult to feel connected to our past. But Marisa, amidst this chaos, amidst letting go of everything else, it's you I cling to. You're the one I want by my side, navigating through this storm together. Can you truly mean that, after everything that's transpired between us? Yes, Marisa. I'm earnest in my desire to mend what's broken. I want to support you, to be there for you, and to help you heal from the wounds we both inflicted. Do you forget the pain you've caused me, Michael? The wounds are still fresh. The scars are still tender. I messed up, Marisa. I acknowledge my mistakes. And I carry the weight of my regrets with me every day. I wish I could turn back time and undo the hurt I caused you. Then you must understand why I'm hesitant to believe in second chances. You can't erase the past or pretend it didn't happen. I understand, Marisa. And while you can't erase the past, I'm determined to learn from it and to do everything in my power to make things right between us. So your guilt and remorse are what led you to seek solace elsewhere? To betray the trust we once shared? No, Marisa. That's not what I'm saying. My actions were inexcusable. And I take full responsibility for them. But it was never about finding solace. It was about my own weakness and inability to cope with the pain I caused you. Enough! I've made up my mind. I want a divorce. Please sign the papers by midweek. Marisa, please. Reconsider. I can't bear the thought of losing you. It's not about fear. It's about love and the hope for redemption. Love? Where was the love when you chose to betray me, Michael? I'm sorry, Marisa. I'm filled with remorse. And I'll do whatever it takes to make amends and prove to you that my love for you is genuine. Your apologies ring hollow now, Michael. Words are meaningless without actions to back them up. I understand your skepticism, Marisa. But I'm committed to changing for the better. Please, give me another chance to show you that I'm capable of being the partner you deserve. It's too late for second chances, Michael. The damage has been done, and the trust we once shared is irreparably broken. I need to move forward without you. Goodbye, Michael. A few days after all of that, I received the divorce papers in the mail signed by my husband. I think after a few days of not talking to me and cooling off, he started to realize that what he'd done was hurting me so much. But all of that hate from him and the amount of times he cheated on me was unforgivable. So me leaving him for good was the right option, I think. And another thing that really caused me so much pain was that he threatened me by saying that if he divorced me, I'd never make it because I was in a wheelchair. I really thought that he was a kind man that understood the pain I was in after the accident, but he never once actually thought about how I feel. I'm sure that things like this happen with a lot of families, and having a family member end up in a bad accident where they can't walk anymore. But I think that most would come together after the shock and make sure that the afflicted is supported for however long it takes for them to heal. I feel though that had I not been paralyzed from the waist down, there would be some point in which Michael's true character would come out and cause a divorce. After the divorce, my dad did not hesitate to tell a lot of people about the kind of person Michael is, and since he's been walking on a thin line when going out to work. And I've heard the last woman that he cheated on me with happened to be one of his co-workers. So when that was figured out, his salary was cut, and he had to go on unpaid leave for a bit while HR dealt with things for someone that cared so much about himself and nobody else. He really let himself go through all the actions. Three months after the divorce had happened, things had become so harsh for him that he ended up quitting his job at the company. And anybody that knew him stopped hanging out with him because they all looked down on him for what he'd done. And so I really don't hear anything anymore about what's happening to him. But I think it's over for Michael and he'll never be able to return to the life he had a year ago before the accident. I've already gotten my half of the properties and the divorce from him as well as my settlement, so there's nothing else I need to know or hear from that man. I don't even care about how he's going to survive now without a job or much money. And I shouldn't have to, right? I've been lucky enough to get back in touch with the company I worked for before the accident, and they allowed me to start working again from home. And because of all my friends and people that my dad have introduced me to, I've been able to stay busy with work and my life, and I haven't had to worry about having food or 
eating or a house to live in, but I'm still very reliant on having my cane to be able to walk. So I'm still going to rehab to make sure that my muscles grow stronger and my mind grows stronger as well. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to freely walk without some kind of tool ever again, but I'm going to keep on training in hopes that one day I can, even if the potential for that is really low. If I keep on putting in lots of work, the chances will continue for me to grow. And along with that, I'm gonna try my best to maintain the life I've already been given now. And I will never forget all the strengths I've had to make it this far already.